Solana is one of the top ecosystems for blockchain developers in 2025, but it can feel a little intimidating if you're just getting started and don't know where to begin. But have no fear. Today, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know to get started with Solana programming so that you can become a blockchain developer in 2025. I'm going to explain everything in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And if you like what you see in this video today and you want to get a jump on Solana programming ASAP, then make sure you mark your calendar this Thursday for May 15th because I'm releasing the end-all be-all training for blockchain developers, the Blockchain Bootcamp version 3. Inside, we're going to cover all the hottest blockchain topics, including developing for Solana. So you won't want to miss this. Hold your spot with the link down below. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about everything that you need to know to get started with Solana development in 2025. So I'm going to be making this video really for two types of people. Number one, if you're already a blockchain developer and you're trying to, you know, get into Solana, maybe you're coming from a background like Ethereum development with Solidity. And then number two is if like you've never developed for blockchain ever, like maybe you're not a programmer at all, or maybe you are a programmer, but you just haven't coded for blockchain. I'm going to try to hit both those angles. So let's start with the basics. You know, what is Solana? Well, Solana, first and foremost, is a blockchain. It's a public ledger. It's a peer to peer network of nodes that talk to one another to make up a global computer where you can do things like send cryptocurrency around and then use applications on it. You can swap tokens. You can use DeFi apps, trade NFTs, all kinds of things you can do in blockchain. You can basically do on Solana. But how is it different from something like Ethereum, for example? So for starters, Solana is designed to be a fast, high throughput chain. So basically it's faster and cheaper than something like Ethereum at the base layer. Okay. Now Ethereum is faster and cheaper to use whenever you start using Ethereum layer twos. Okay. But Solana is designed to be a single blockchain where you don't have these multiple layers. You can just do everything there. It's faster and cheaper, but it is a blockchain that supports programs. Okay. And that's the important thing. So it's just like Ethereum in that regard. So as a blockchain developer, you can write code that goes on the chain, and that's like the back end for your application. Now, how is it different from like Ethereum? So Ethereum uses smart contracts. Those are the programs that run in the blockchain, but Solana uses something called Solana programs, okay? And they're not technically smart contracts. People will still call them smart contracts. But Solana programs is basically the analogy to Ethereum smart contracts. So there's a couple things to note about these Solana programs. Okay, they're written in a programming language called Rust, all right, which is different from Ethereum and other EVM compatible chains, which is most of the blockchains out there, which uses the Solidity programming language. All right. So we'll talk more about Rust here in a few minutes, but that's an important distinction to make between Solana programs and Ethereum smart contracts. Now, another big difference is that, um, you know, you have accounts on both these types of blockchains. Like if you have a wallet that's connected to the blockchain, you've got an account, all right? Uh, but with smart contracts and Solana programs, your data essentially lives in the accounts, not the contracts themselves or the programs themselves. So like when you're programming with Ethereum, you might persist data on chain in the contract, but this is actually different with Solana programs. The data lives on the account, not the actual program itself. Okay, so those are some of the basics you have to understand about Solana before you start getting into development. All right, basically it's a blockchain that supports programs just like smart contracts where you can write blockchain applications. All right, the accounts work a little bit differently and also so do the programs themselves. They're written in Rust. Now, how do you actually go about building this stuff? Well, now you need to understand what tools that you need in order to build programs or, or applications and become a blockchain developer for Solana. So let's go back to Rust. So again, this is the main programming language for writing programs on the Solana blockchain. All right. So a quick overview of this is Rust is a systems programming language. It's fast like C++, but considered to be safer. It's got lots of other benefits like memory safety without garbage collection. It's designed for performance reliability and also concurrency, which is huge. Now, another benefit of Rust is that it's also a programming language that's used outside of blockchain development. Okay. So if you're writing smart contracts and solidity for other blockchains, chains, then pretty much the only thing you can do with Solidity programming language is write smart contracts for blockchains. Like that's what it's designed for. You can't really do much else with it. All right. But with Rust, you know, you can write programs for Solana, but you've got lots of applications across the broader tech landscape where you can use this programming language uh, where you can't really do that with Solidity. So anyways, that's another point. If you want to learn to develop for Solana, you've got to learn Rust. Now let's move on to libraries, frameworks, other stuff like that. So the first thing you have to understand is the top framework for developing programs for Solana. So if you're not familiar with what a framework is, basically it's a set of tools on your computer that's going to make your life a lot easier when you're trying to create code. Okay, so if you're trying to compile code, deploy it to a blockchain, write tests, write scripts, 
then there's a lot of stuff you're going to have to do over and over again, and you don't want to have to do all this stuff manually. A framework is basically a set of tools that lets you do this quickly and streamline this process. So the top framework for Solana development is going to be Anchor, all right? So if you have come from, you know, a Ethereum development background, maybe you've written smart contracts with something like Hardhat, for example, that's one of the top Ethereum development frameworks for smart contracts. This is kind of an analog. So Anchor for Solana development is definitely the top one to check out. All right, so just like Ethereum development with something like Solidity, if you're gonna develop for Solana, you know, you're gonna write programs in Rust for the blockchain. But if you're gonna be a blockchain developer, you probably are gonna need to do more, more than just write those programs in Rust. You're probably gonna have to write tests for them, probably to put them on a blockchain. You're probably gonna have to write some sort of script that interacts with them, or maybe even a front end that user interface that talks to those programs on the blockchain, okay? And so for that reason, you're probably going to need to do secondary programming language to do all those tasks, all right? So that's where JavaScript comes into play, all right? So definitely JavaScript is my number one recommendation as a complementary programming language for blockchain developers behind whatever backend language they're using so, because you can do more with it, all right? And you're going to need to know a specific library that's going to let you interact with the Solana blockchain because if you're writing a JavaScript application, that JavaScript application is not going to be able to talk to the Solana blockchain outside the box by default. So you need a special library. So that's where uh, Web3.js comes in. So the Solana version of Web3.js. So if you have an Ethereum development background, we used to have Web3.js for Ethereum way back in the day. It's no longer supported. It's been replaced by Ethers.js. But Web3 was basically ported over to Solana to interact with the Solana blockchain, interact with Solana programs. And that's going to be the top library for JavaScript interactions uh, for the Solana blockchain. All right, so next thing you need to know about is going to be the Solana CLI. Okay, so what is that? Well, basically, CLI stands for Command Line Interface. So basically, it's a tool that lets you type terminal commands in your terminal and then interact with the Solana blockchain or with different technologies that are related to Solana. So for example, with the Solana CLI, you from your terminal can do things like create wallets. Okay, so if you want to spin up a brand new wallet, you can do that straight from the Command Line Interface. If you want to deploy a Solana program to the blockchain, you can do that with the Solana CLI. And then finally, if you actually want to interact with the Solana cluster, you can also do that with the Solana CLI just straight from your terminal. It's a really powerful tool that developers need to know. All right, so finally, one last thing you need to understand is different Solana networks, okay? So you've got things like test networks or dev nets, okay? And then you've got main nets and you've got these block explorers. So these are important things you understand as a blockchain developer. So again, if you're coming from an Ethereum background, if you're not, uh, it's okay. Basically, you know, you have blockchains that you can run on your computer. That's where you essentially, you know, write programs or smart contracts that you can don't have to use any real money for. You can restart them, stop them, and reset them and everything, okay? They're not actually connected to the outside world. But as a developer, if you want to put your contracts out there or your programs out there and let other people use them, you've got one of two options. You can put it out there on the real blockchain, which is going to cost you money, okay? And maybe it's not good to put them out there if, you know, you're violating a regulation or something like that, okay? So you can use a test network or a dev net as an intermediate step, all right? Or maybe you're just testing it out and you just don't want the real contract to be out there. So you can use those on Solana as well, just like Ethereum. And then finally, you can also go to the mainnet. Now, either way, you're probably going to want to inspect whatever the activity is on these test networks or the mainnets. And that's where these block explorers come into play, okay? So block explorers are basically websites that just index the entire blockchain. So you can do things like search for different accounts, transactions, or programs, or even blocks in the search bar, and then pull them up and then actually see data about them on the website themselves okay so you can see this type of stuff all right you can look at different transactions you can see what happened in specific transactions you can look at who sent the transaction and information about their account it's just a really handy tool that you have to know all right so that's an overview of the solana basics like what is it all right what programming languages does it use what type of tools do you need to know if you're going to become a solana developer in 2025 now let's talk about how solana development actually works and how to learn it okay so basically you're going to be writing programs in rust that's going to go on the Solana blockchain. And then if you're going to write a front-end application, a user interface that talks to that, all right, then you're going to have to use some type of front-end framework like React.js or Next.js. And then that's not actually going to talk to Solana out of the box. So you need a special library like we talked about before 
like Web3.js that's going to let you communicate with your backend programs you've written on the blockchain. And then you can put all that stuff together. Okay. And then finally, a user is going to connect to the application with a wallet. So Phantom is the most popular choice to manage Solana wallets. Usual will connect with Phantom. They'll go to your website that you created. And it's going to talk to your program on the Solana blockchain. So what's the best way to learn that? Well, definitely I recommend learning the programming languages while you're building something. That's the absolute most efficient way to learn any of this stuff. So basically, um, the best way to do that is to actually go over the shoulder with somebody who's showing you how to build it step by step where you learn the programming languages as you go. All right, I've got lots of videos on my channel that show you how to do this type of thing. But basically, that's how you'll learn to write Solana programs by building something, let's say, I don't know, a, a token program or like a crowd sale program, okay? where you're actually learning Rust while you're building the application that actually does something, okay? And you'll put that on the blockchain. And then whenever that's out there, you'll write a front-end application step-by-step step where you'll get up to speed with JavaScript, React.js, if you don't already know those things. But also, particularly, Web3.js for Solana, which is going to let you talk to the program on the back end, all right? You'll pull that together, and then you'll have actually seen how to create a full-stack application step-by-step, step, and you'll get your feet wet with the programming languages. So that's what I call guided development, where you're going over the shoulder with a guide where they kind of hold your hand through everything and you learn through immersion rather than having to learn the programming languages and then go learn how to build something later, okay? But whenever you're done with that, you want to switch to unguided development where essentially you're going to take the training wheels off and then build something without instructions. So the easiest way to get started doing that is basically take the project you just did and then build something on top of it that it doesn't already do. Change the colors, change the font for beginner stuff, but then get more advanced and actually add new features, all right? Now, whenever you're finished with that, the final step is just build something completely yourself from scratch, okay? That's where the real learning comes into play because you'll have to figure out, okay, I learned how to do this before, now how do I apply it to my own project? That's where you get the real world problem solving skills that you need to actually become a blockchain developer. And that's what's gonna level you up to actually have mastery over these programming languages. And so that's the exact type of thing that we're going to do uh, inside the blockchain bootcamp this coming Thursday on uh, May 15th, okay? Again, this is going to be the end-all, be-all training for blockchain developers, this blockchain bootcamp version 3. Inside, we're going to cover the hottest blockchain topics, uh, including how to develop for Solana with Rust, uh, with Red 3 js with Anchor, like I'm talking about in this video today, okay? In addition to all the other stuff, like Ethereum development with Solidity, Ethers.js, and Hardhat, and we're going to go deep on Flash Loans, we're going to talk about AI, everything that you need to know to become a blockchain master in 2025. Whether you're a beginner or you're already a seasoned developer, we've got you covered. So trust me, you won't want to miss it. Make sure you hold your spot with the link down below. So that's all I've got for today. Make sure you smash the like button down below. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp Diversity.